Hi and welcome to this video on Ansible Tile Workflows. My name is Owen Osborne Walsh and I'm a junior solution architect here at Red Hat and today we'll be taking a quick look at what exactly Ansible Tile Workflows are and then we'll jump into a demonstration uh, using some network jobs on an existing instance of Ansible Tower to show you just how simply uh, Ansible Tower Workflows can be deployed and how effective they can be at helping you to scale out your automation across different areas uh, of your Ansible Tower instance. So what is Ansible Tower? Simply put, Ansible Tower is a UI and RESTful API that allows you to scale your IT automation, manage complex deployments, and speed up productivity. Ansible Tower is the step up from just using Ansible Engine within your command line and gives you access to key features such as role-based access control, SEM integration, better credential management, and of course, like we'll look at today, uh, workflows. So Ansible Tower exists within the Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, SKU, um, and this is all bundled under one subscription, which is a Red Hat Ansible Engine as the foundation, Red Hat Ansible Tower to kind of start to operate and control your automation at scale. Um, and then we move on to the cloud.redhat.com offerings, which are value adds at the top of the subscription um, with things such as uh, automated governance, uh, certified content from either us or our partners, um, and automation analytics, uh, allowing administrators to kind of manage multiple tower, Ansible Tower instances and view things, uh, key metrics such as utilization. So as I mentioned, Red Hat Ansible Tower has a lot of key features that differentiate it from just using Ansible Engine in the command line. Uh, things like push button automation, so being able to just at the push of a button start a job. Um, RESTful API, uh, allowing you to kind of integrate um, Ansible Tower within existing areas of your infrastructure or your pipeline. Role-based access control, so you can you know control exactly who has access to what, um, when and where essentially. Uh, enterprise uh, integrations with OAuth 2 or you know notifications such as uh, Slack, centralized login, and of course, like we'll talk about today, workflows. So what a workflow actually is, is essentially a uh, automation approach that allows you to chain job templates or project syncs or approvals um, to run either sequentially or in parallel. Uh, with different conditions such as on success of this job, run this, or on failure, or always. And use things like convergence to ensure that, you know, two templates, um, once the two job jobs that are running within that template complete, then move on to the next job. Um, they're really easy to set up, as I'll show you in the demonstration in a second, um, and allow you to add things such as um, approval, so, you know, human interaction approval uh, when a certain area of a workflow is reached. So a workflow job can have um, the following states, which is waiting, running, success, cancelled, error, and failed. Um, and we'll see that later on in the demo. Um, and it's really easy to understand using the workflow visualizer. Uh, with the key here, you can see, you know, you have on success lines in green, on failure lines in red, and always lines in blue, um, as well as explaining what exactly each uh, step of the workflow actually is. But I think the best way to actually understand workflows is to jump into the demo. So that's what we'll move on to now. So creating a workflow in Ansible Tower is actually really simple. Um, first off, we start the dashboard um, and we want to select the templates tab. From there, we want to click on that green cross in the top right corner and select a workflow template. And just start off with, we want to give it a simple name. So for the sake of this, we'll just call it workflow demo. Um, and for the sake of this demonstration, we'll use some networking templates that already exist within the instance. So we'll just give it a description of networking workflow example. From there, you can select an organization uh, from any of the organizations available to you on, uh, on this particular instance, but it's not needed, so we'll uh, skip that step. But we will select an inventory, and we'll uh, select to run this on the workshop inventory um, so that this template, uh, this workflow template will run against uh, the nodes uh, contained within the workshop inventory. Um, we're going to leave the rest of that blank. Um, however, you can, of course, you know, apply limits, SEM branch, or add uh, labels to the template. Um, but for now, that's the that's what we need to get started. And from here, uh, it will take you automatically into the workflow visualizer once you save the job, um, and you can click start to add the first template to uh, the visualizer. It's not just templates you can add though. You can add project syncs, inventory syncs, and approval stages. Um, but just to begin with, we're going to add a, a backup network configurations job um, to this workflow template. Now you can see at the bottom here, we have these two options, run uh, and convergence. So 
run only has the one option to start with because it's the first job so it's uh, the first template so it's always going to run um, but convergence has uh, two different options so all and any and what convergence essentially means is if you have two or you know one basically more than one template running in parallel um, whether the next step needs to wait for all of the templates uh, or the jobs at that point while they're running to finish um, or whether it can just wait for any before moving on to the next step so uh, for this one we'll doesn't it, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing before so we'll just leave it on any and you can see there that we've added the backup network configurations uh, template to our workflow now you can see the kind of three uh, buttons on the right and you can see the X which will remove um, the template from the workflow you have the link button which we'll touch on a little bit later and you have the plus to add another template to the workflow so we'll just click that plus now and add a new template um, and the template that we'll add uh, is the network banner. So let's say on these uh, new network devices that we're setting up, we wanna uh, change the banner across all of them. So you can see now on the run uh, options, we have on success and on failure. Um, and that basically means, you know, uh, on the success of the previous template, now run this job or on failure of the previous template, now run this job. Um, so we'll do that on a success of backing up the network configurations and we'll give that an any convergence uh, because again, it's, it's not important. There's only one job that runs beforehand. Um, but what uh, is relevant here is that now you have this prompt button um, and because network banner contains a uh, Ansible survey in it, um, you can change the prompts uh, from within the workflow visualizer. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave them uh, on default. Um, and you can also then change uh, and create a survey for the template uh, yourself a little bit later on for any specific things that you want to add to this uh, workflow template but um, I'll show you that a little bit later so for now we'll just add the network banner and you can see the difference there between the green link here showing on success and the blue link here showing uh, always um, and we'll just add another job to run in parallel uh, and we'll pick um, something like network user um, to configure the users and, and ensure that any existing users are configured correctly on the network devices and set up any users that don't already exist. So again, we'll do it on success with an any convergence. We'll leave the prompts as they are and we can just select that and you can see that these two now are set up uh, ready to run in parallel. From there, we can add another job. So let's say, uh, you know, every time that these two jobs uh, run, we want to get a network report. Um, and we can change that to always um, and again um, we can now change the convergence to all so we can say um, you know require all of the previous uh, you know connected or, or chained templates to complete before moving on to the network report um, so we can add that there and then we can use that uh, link button from earlier and click on network report and you see in the top right here you can add the link and we'll again pick uh, always run a network report once those two have finished let's say that it fails though for example for for whatever reason um we might want to do a network restore on the back of a failure um so again we'll do an on success uh or we we'll do an on failure this time um with an any convergence and leave the prompts as they are and you can see there that red link to represent the uh you know on failure um, and then again we can use that uh, link button and link that uh, in this way and now we have you know two different options essentially on failure on failure of either of these regardless of when they fail do a network restore um, but uh, in the event that there isn't a failure we'll always uh, get a network report or even if it you know even if there is a failure we'll still get the network report because we put that always link there and we can just go to the bottom right and just save that uh, workflow and it will take us back out now like any object in Ansible Tower you have um, you know able to control the different RBAP permissions so you know you can add uh, teams and roles and users uh, from the permissions tab you can set up notifications so for example here you know if you have some kind of DevOps slack channel and you want to you know send a automated message on a start um, and failure or maybe just success and failure um, you can have those automated but there's also options for emails and that kind of thing it's just whatever uh, notification integration you have within that instance completed jobs is of course empty because nothing's run yet um, and then schedules is a really great thing especially for something like this where maybe uh, you're creating a workflow for um, network creation or, or network backup sorry uh, then adding a schedule is a really helpful feature because you can schedule it to run call that every day 
schedule it to start today, just put it for a second over midnight and then just put the repeat frequency as every day with a never ending. And if you were doing something like a back, backing up, you know, network configurations or something like that daily um, as a workflow, then you could just schedule that to run every day, you know, past a second and, and that'll all um, be handled kind of automatically for you. And you can see there you can turn it on and off and edit it, etc. So if you don't want to actually run the workflow, we can go and press that launch button there. And that will take us into this visualization of the workflow running itself. And you can see here, um, you know, exactly how the workflow is run out, uh, laid out. And you can see the dot on the left of the uh, of each template indicating that a job is running. Um, and that's the current stage it's at. And if you then click the details, it will take you straight in to that instance of the job running. And you can see all of the um, different variables that the job is running with, as well as kind of the output of the playbook, like you could with, you know, any individual Ansible Tower job. You can see there, something to quickly touch on is that uh, it's using two different credentials, you know, um, that's one of the benefits we touched on earlier with workflows is that, you know, multiple credentials, multiple inventories can be used. Um, and the credentials used in this template and this job run don't have to correspond with the network banner credentials or template, just as long as they exist within the same instance. So we can see there now that the green around the edge symbolizes that the fact, uh, that it's run successfully. Um, and the same now with the network banner job. And we can see that it hasn't actually moved on to the network report job yet. Um, because of the fact that network user is running and we require all of the jobs to finish before the network report is um, actually then run. So we've just skipped ahead a little bit here and we can see that the network user jobs actually failed and that's triggered both the network report uh, job to now run and the network restore uh, job to now you know start. Um, and the reason for that failure is actually because we took the credential out of the network user job. So if we then go to details and look on the back of the failure, we can see exactly what we would expect to see on a failed Ansible job, um, you know, see the failures and, and we can go and debug exactly why, um, why exactly that job failed. But on the back of that, you could see there that network report and network restore were then both running um, network restore because one of the jobs failed, despite the fact that network banner was successful, network user failed, so network restore was run, um, and that network report waited for network banner and network user to uh, complete before then running uh, and now running successfully. Just like any template, the workflow templates can be edited from the template section uh, within your Ansible Tower instance, uh, again, by just simply clicking on them. You can see here, like we mentioned earlier, that option to add a survey and add any, um, you know, of the variable inputs that you want to add uh, throughout the workflow. Um, if we just go into workflow visualizer here, we can show you just how easy it is to actually edit um, and add in something like an approval on a workflow. Um, so let's say that before we do a network restore, um, we want to just check and see if essentially uh, a network restore is actually what's required for the error that's happened. So what we could do here is add something like an approval and call it network restore approval. Um, don't need a description and we'll just give it a timeout of something like 60 minutes just so that you know uh, there's a chance for someone to take a look at it uh, before it just times out uh, and on timeout will just uh, automatically deny um, the approval so if we select that you can see that that's now changed to network restore approval and we could add something here that says uh, network restore on success convergence uh, any uh, because there's only one job so although for kind of safety you could put all just to ensure that uh, it does actually run and then you have the network restore here. So on success of that network restore approval, um, run the network restore. Um, and if we just save that and launch the template, um, we'll skip ahead slightly um, and just show you exactly what it looks like when we actually get to that network restore approval step. So we can see here that the network user job has just failed. And now this network restore approval is currently running. Um, and as you can see, this little uh, notification has appeared in the top right, which essentially is just asking us, uh, you know, network restore approval, um, do we want to continue the job workflow? And we can exit out of that without having to kind of check it. And we could come here and just take a look and see exactly what's gone wrong with the network user job. 
okay, that looks like something that we might wanna do a restore off the back of and just go to that notification and select approve. And from there, you can see that now there's no jobs waiting approval. We just press that X in the top right and then you can see that it moves straight on to the network restore. So you can see how easy it is just to add another layer of complexity to your existing Ansible Tower infrastructure um, and essentially just, you know, use things like approvals and convergence uh, to add a layer of complexity to that automation um, and string, you know, templates uh, and project syncs and inventory syncs together uh, to essentially, you know, just automate as much of your infrastructure as you can. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the demo uh, and happy automating.